Hashem, I saw Hashem, Roy may my mean Hashem, I For Shoshana is not just in time, in time for Shoshana, but it's more like the cause of Rosh Hashana. What makes Rosh Hashana Rosh Hashana is day before Rosh Hashana. So, what are we looking for, Rosh Hashana? What are we supposed to do today to cause Rosh Hashana? So, today is the birth of Tzemach Tzedek, and it's very um, in theme with the day of Rosh Hashana. The most famous teaching, I think, of Tzimach Tzedek, at least in Los Angeles, the most famous teaching, is Trach of Zayn, the thinking will be good. And so too, day before Shoshana, it's customary for everyone to wear white clothing, as the Torah says, day before Shoshana, even though uh, the only ones actually do this in Los Angeles is a Kabbalah center. But, um, yeah. Um, they do it all the time. They don't count. Anyway, so... So there, there used to be a custom that says a tour to wear white clothing day before Shoshana. Why white, white clothing? To show, as the tour says, Uf Mazu, the unique character of our nation. The unique character of our nation is that we know for sure that God will do a miracle for us before the miracle happens. And therefore we already celebrate today that we're victorious, that things are good. As the Machsadik says, think it will be good. So therefore the custom is that we to wear white clothing, even if, if we're not wearing white clothing, but at least we should uh, be lots, We should smile a lot more. It's a, it's a big thing going on. Abishter, God has given each of us a good and sweet year. All the Yisrael, the Jewish people, a way that never happened before, a way that was beyond everything that ever happened before. As the author of it says, that on the um, day of Rosh Hashanah, a new light comes in the world that never was there before. So automatically, the, the, this year has a new kind of goodness and sweetness that never existed before. And so therefore, the, the simcha, the joy, the day before Rosh Hashanah, it should be a greater joy and a great and, and sweeter than any other day, any other Shoshana, because there's a a much greater blessing God God's giving us uh, this year than never before. The blessing of the true Chikulot Mashiach L'chaim. This is in sync with the kind of thing we're supposed to do on Shoshana and also the day before Shoshana. What's the main thing we're supposed to do on Shoshana? Shoshana is called the head of the year. So you think it's called the head of the year? The focus should be to serve Hashem with our minds. A lot of people, a lot of rabbis, a lot of lay leaders, they spend the day of Rosh Hashanah pontificating about why um, uh, this war, this struggle, <coughs> global economy, global warming, all kinds of global issues. That's, a lot of people spend the day of Rosh Hashanah talking about that. You go to a lot of synagogues, that's the focus. The global, the, the macro. And the truth is that they would be right if Rosh Hashanah was about the mind. But the truth is that Rosh Hashanah isn't about the mind. As the Zohar says, the word head of the year actually refers to Galgalta de Chafyal Mech. The Zohar says the meaning of the head of the year is not the brain. The meaning of Rosh Hashanah is 
Galgalta. Galgalta means the skull that's on top of the brain. What does the skull represent for us? The skull is about the will of Hashem. The, doing the will of Hashem. It's not smoke. It's, it's not smoke. It's not smoke. You can stay. Yo, yo, yo. It's okay, it's okay. How do you say Tajame, Tajame, Daniel? Tajame, 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 I tell him many times, don't smoke, he's sitting Okay. All right, moving later along. Okay. It's crazy. Okay. So, I heard the following story. Ramel Tzivo was shown. When the Achayel Yo, Jun, Achayel Yo, when the previous Rebbe was living in Leningrad, the government asked him to move to Leningrad so they could scrutinize his behavior more. Yeah. So, um, so he, um, a lot of Hasidim from all over Russia came to Leningrad to be with him, to be with him in Rosh Hashanah. And because they traveled from far distances, the, the, the previous Rebbe would say a discourse on the second night of Rosh Hashanah. And people were, were very tired. So the Hasidim, so many of the Hasidim took a nap on the day of Rosh Hashanah, in order to be able to be awake to hear the discourse. And even though it says that it, it's better not to sleep Rosh Hashanah, on Rosh Hashanah, the first day of Rosh Hashanah, they would sleep, so they should have the strength to hear the Mimer on the night of the second night of Rosh Hashanah. And even though if, if you sleep Rosh Hashanah, it says that it could cause your, your, your good fortune to sleep throughout the year, Chas Hashanah, but the Hasidim would say it's better that your mazel sleeps than to sleep during a mimer. You want to hear the previous episode saying a mimer, they have the strength, special strength. <coughs> so therefore, it was, it was worth it. It's worth it to sleep wow. in order to hear the previous episode's discourse. There was, so there was a Nisanemanov al Vashon. So he was sleeping. And he woke up in the middle of his uh, sleep. Oh, he's, it's late. It's, sleeping in Yeah, so they slept in order to get ready for the mimer. In order to hear the mimer, the Rebbe. It's, 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 it makes sense also according to uh, according to Nigla, according to Shulchan Aruch. It says some people would sleep on the second day, and either way, um, but there is a higher purpose. They wanted to learn the deep secret of Torah that was going to be revealed then by Hashem through through the second generation. Uh, it's kind of like you know a king wanted to reveal himself to the people and then and to ignore the king to sleep during the discourse. So it made sense according to Chassidus, according to Gemara, Shulchan Aruch, to sleep. This is what happened. This is Nemanov, he was sleeping. And he woke up, and he woke up late. And they ran as fast as they could to be on time for the discourse. But they overslept, they came late. So the previous rabbi is in the middle of the discourse, and he's talking about the service of Hashem of a servant. Rosh Hashanah, the theme of the service of Hashem, Rosh Hashanah is accepting the yoke of Hashem. The previous rabbi said it's like a servant. And then he said, as you're walking in, an evet a servant never oversleeps. <laughs> That's what they heard as they walked in. And this and now I've spoken about this his whole life. And a servant never oversleeps because if you're really devoted to your master, so you, you won't oversleep. You're, 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 the yoke of the master upon you will prevent you from oversleeping. Mendel Futafas himself, uh, in, when he was um, studying in the yeshiva in Lubavitch, sometimes he would be very tired. And he would tell his uh, study partner, hey, um, wake me up in three minutes. Wake up in four minutes. And he himself would always wake up when he said he wanted to be woken up. So it was a unique, <coughs> unique thing. He never, he never slept five minutes, always three or four. Now that's around the foot of us. So the point is, Rosh Hashanah is the day when we accept upon ourselves the, the sovereignty of Hashem. And as the Zohar says, it's not the skull, it's not the, the mind, it's the, it's the skull. And the idea of the skull is, it's the will of Hashem. It's the focus is to do the will of Hashem. But the question is, what's unique about Rosh Hashanah isn't the whole year, every day we see Rosh Hashanah, we, every day we see Mordahani, isn't every day about accepting the yoke of Hashem? What's unique about Rosh Hashanah? Every single day, every moment of our lives, we're supposed to be serving Hashem. So how come Rosh Hashanah is called the day we carnate Hashem as our king? Aren't we supposed to carnate Hashem, carnate Hashem as our king every single day? What's unique about Rosh Hashanah? It's supposed to be happening all the time. Every thought, every word, every action we do, 
is supposed to be in sync with what Hashem wants. The Rebbe Hashab, who's a child, his sister asked him if he wants to go horseback riding. And he responded, he responded, acceptance of the yoke of Hashem has to be from Moda'ani until Hamapil. The guy spent, no, he didn't want to go horseback riding. <laughs> from the start, moment you start the day till Hamapil, you go to sleep, that's what the uh, day is supposed to be about. So what's unique about Rosh Hashanah? How, how is that different to every day of the year? Every day you're also supposed to accept the yoke of Hashem. How is, how is it different? Supposed to, when you say Moda'ani, you give yourself over to Hashem. There was a great um, Rosh Hashiva, um, his name was Rabbi Cheskel Avramsky. He was a rabbi in a city called Slutsk. It was a uh, rav, a rabbi of many other prestigious rabbis before him served in that community. And uh, when he came, it was ready in time of communism, in time of Stalin. And uh, it was very um, difficult to take such a position because taking such a position meant to be under the scrutiny of the KGB. But he was very dedicated and he, didn't, he, 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 um, he accepted the position. But shortly after he accepted the position, he was arrested. He, he, he gave a Torah class, he made a wedding, all kinds of um, sins that, were, that would, would get you in prison in Soviet Russia. So he is um, he's in prison, and he is this you know, prominent rabbi, and he is given this, this task of hard labor every single day. And one night, he's, he can't fall asleep, and he is in his cell, there's another uh, Russian lawyer, and the Russian lawyer sees he can't fall asleep. The Russian lawyer says, why can't you fall asleep? Is it because of the, what the communists did to you? Well, let me tell you what the communists did to me. He's a communist killed basically my whole family. Did they do anything worse to you? Like, why, why can't you sleep? What, 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 how are you different to me? Wow. So Chaskar Ramsky said this, he said, I'm, I'm, I can't fall asleep because I'm thinking about a prayer that we say every day, and I don't know how to, how to justify this prayer. What's a prayer we say every day? You say our prayer every morning, Moidani, I thank Hashem. Thank Hashem for being alive. What kind of life do I have that I'm thanking Hashem for this life? Well, what am I thanking Hashem for? I'm thanking Hashem that I'm able to, 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 to have this hard labor in Siberia. In Siberia, it's hard for us to understand. In Siberia, you spit on the ground, your spit freezes. It's, 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 it's a crazy kind of frost and cold and torture. And do this, he was five years in Siberia. So, so he said, I don't know how we say this prayer. How do we say, So, this Russian lawyer says, but you say the prayer. He says, I do say the prayer. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what I discovered in my thoughts. At the end of the prayer, we say the words, I offer, it starts with, I offer thanks before you living an eternal king, because you gave me back my soul. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness also means, great is my faith in you, and Amun Secha also means, great is your faith in me. I realize that Hashem has given me a task over here, that I'm on a mission from Hashem, that there's a purpose of why my soul is here in this place. And although this is not the most friendly place for, for a Jew, but I know that this is a place Hashem wants me to be, and Hashem doesn't send small soldiers to a big mission. If there's a big mission to get done, Hashem sends the greatest soldiers. So there's a reason why I am sent over here, and I, and, and I am thanking Hashem because of, He has given me this, the, the faith that I have in Hashem. He's, because of the Neshama He's given to me, because of the faith He has in me, and because of the faith He's given to, in me to, into Hashem, that's I'm saying Maidan. Many years later, Abramsky visited the previous Rebbe, and he told the Rebbe about this exchange, this encounter with this other Russian lawyer, and the previous Rebbe said it was worth it to go to prison just to be able, who knows this previous Rebbe, it could be the whole reason you were there, just to come to this this uh, realization about what the Moida'ani is really about, what, what you think, what Moida'ani really means. This Moida'ani, you said in, the, in, in that in that prison, that time, with this with this depth, this this feeling, this understanding, this perspective of why you're here, why your soul is in this world, it could be that's the whole reason of why um, you were in prison, just to get to that that point. So, ordinarily, our acceptance of the yoke of Hashem is is and of the word is utilitarian. It's for a purpose. It's like there's a job that needs to get done, so we need to do the job. So you have to accept the job to do the job. Before doing the job, you have to accept the job. Like we say every day in our prayers, we say Shema, and we say Vayim Shemaya. So what's Shema mean? Accept upon ourselves the yoke of Hashem. Yoyim Shemaya, here's the job. The job is do A, B, and C. So the whole year, that's true. What's unique about Rosh Hashanah is something else. What's unique about Rosh Hashanah? We're saying now a prayer every day. The prayer of Lord Hashem, 
In that prayer, Hashem says, we should look for the innermost part of the heart. We should look for our inner, deepest feelings. And when does Hashem give us the chance to actually feel the deepest feelings we have in our heart, the innermost part of the heart? That's Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, it's not just about acceptance of the yoke of Hashem to do something. Rosh Hashanah, there is, an, there is a, a feeling of the deepest part of the Hashem that's revealed, as the altar describes it, a Jew doesn't want, a Jew cannot separate himself from Hashem. Rosh Hashanah, Hashem reveals in us this, not just we're going to do what Hashem says, that's just, not just externally to follow what Hashem tells us to do, Rosh Hashanah, Hashem reveals in us this feeling that there's nothing else, that we feel the King Himself. We feel all there is is Him. And because we feel all there is is Him, there's no, it's not that we're just going to follow what He has to do, but there's nothing else. And this year, there's a unique layer, unique element that Hashem gives us in this experience. The Rosh Hashanah this year falls out on, on Shabbos. Chassidus always asks the question, it seems like we're missing something this year because we don't have the shofar on Shabbos. How can we have a Shoshana without the shofar? And Chassidus answers, what's the point of the shofar? The point of the shofar is to bring out in ourselves this cry from our hearts that we want Hashem, we want deeply to connect to Hashem with, with a pleasure. That it should not just be we're following the rules Hashem told us to do, we're going to follow the rules, but Shoshana is supposed to be deeper, a cry from the depth of the heart that we, that, that it, with a great pleasure that we want Hashem Himself. Not because we have to, not because we're supposed to, but that we want to. In Hasidus, there's a discussion about the highest um, soul power. It says there's a power of desire and there's a power of pleasure. Desire is something that nothing can stop. You want something, your power of desire could, could help you muscle through anything. You could push through and do anything that, that your desire tells you to do. But it's forcing. So it's pushing. It's not you. Then there's another soul power. And that is pleasure. Pleasure is, when you have pleasure in something, it's you. You're having pleasure. It's, it's the, the essence of the soul, the highest and deepest part of the soul is pleasure. The cry of the chauffeur is the cry of the, the Jews, the vekus, is his deepest pleasure is in Hashem. And because his deepest pleasure is in Hashem, therefore there's a tear, there's a cry. The, the, tearing, the crying is not about you're forced to do what Hashem wants you to do, and therefore, oh, I have to do all these things. Throughout the year, there is a sentiment of, I have to accept upon myself the yoke of Hashem, whether I like it or not, I have to follow what Hashem wants me to do. But Hashem is something deeper. Hashem reveals the innermost part of our heart that wants the yoke of Hashem, that feels all there is is Hashem. And therefore, it's not just like external, it's in a way that As the previous Rebbe said in his last discourse, Rosh Hashanah, his last discourse, he actually, it was printed in the year of his passing, it was said years before, after the Taik Beis, he said in his last discourse, something the Rebbe said is relevant to every Rosh Hashanah. He said in his last discourse that Rosh Hashanah is, is celebrated in the time of harvest. It's celebrated in a time when you have everything you need. You have all the fruits in your basket, nothing you're worrying about. And you have all the brachas, all, everything's there. It's not like you're, you're celebrating Rosh Hashanah when you're planting seeds and you don't know what the season is going to bring, if it's going to rain. Rosh Hashanah is celebrated when all the fruits are there in, this, in, the, in the greatest, um, in the most special month of the year, which has all the blessings. The seventh month of the year, the word seven in Hebrew comes to the word satiated. It's a month which is full of blessings. It's a month, physically, it's a month of harvest. And also spiritually, it's a month when Hashem gives us all the source of blessing for the whole year. Seventh also means not just satiated, but satiates. It's a source of the whole blessing. It has blessings, it has harvest, it has wine, it has atonement. It's, it's a month full of all the good things. So the previous Shabbat said that what's unique of Rosh Hashanah is that acceptance of the yoke of Hashem it was with great pleasure, with our chava, with comfort. A servant serves his master with strain, with anxiety. With he, has to, he's, he feels him, the yoke of his master, and that wakes him out of his sleep. Rosh Hashanah is with great joy. It's a yoke, but it's a sweet yoke. It's a yoke that we want. The, the theme of Rosh Hashanah is the coronation of Hashanah with the greatest joy, with the greatest pleasure. And that's the, um, that's the uh, meaning of the word shofar itself. Shofar comes to the word shapru. Shapru means to beautify. The previous Sabbath told my grandfather, whatever you do, you should do it with fargadnig, with pleasure. And this year, 
because Hashem falls out on Shabbos, Hashem gives us this unique ability to to feel pleasure in everything we do in the service of Hashem. To feel pleasure, not pleasure because of what we're doing, but pleasure because of of who we are and who we're doing it for. I just want to give you one, one example to, 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 to bring this home. Oh, doors are closed. Don't worry, I have the key. Um, the the um, okay, good. Let's go. Uh, so, I did it, I did it, I So this last discourse, the previous Rebbe said that, that Rosh Hashanah, it's acceptance of Hashem with great joy and pleasure and with comfort. Parachava means with comfort. It's not with a state of anxiety, now the state of fear, it's with great comfort. That you, you feel that you're, you know, that... The reason that why comfort is the right word is because the essence of the soul is our chava. The essence of the soul is pleasure. The deepest thing in the soul is pleasure. So when we talk about our connection to Hashem, it's associated with, with, with um, not force, not desire, it's associated with, with comfort, with pleasure, with being at home. One of the things Shofar reminds us of is um, the story of the Akedah. How Avram Vinu is offering Isaac as a sacrifice, and all of a sudden he discovers this, this ram caught in the thicket, and he lifts his eyes, he sees the ram, and Hashem tells him, offer the ram instead. So what's the meaning of him lifting his eyes? What's the idea of, the, of the, being caught in the thicket? What, what is it, what's going on over here? The ram has two horns. That ram had two horns. The left horn of the ram was used, Hashem gave us the Torah, and we heard the shofar when the Torah was given. And the right horn is going to be used immediately when Mashiach comes, the shofar is going to be blown, and every Jewish heart is going to be inspired to come close to Hashem, and it will come from all over the world to Yerushalayim, to hearing the right horn of the shofar. So the, the, the ram represents the Jewish people. And Jews are interesting people. If you ask someone if they're American, they'll say they're American, if they're French, they're French. If you ask someone if they're Jewish, Oh, they'll have all kinds of interesting. Why are you asking? Uh, did I look Jewish? My mother was Jewish. My grandfather was Jewish. I don't. What, how do you define Jewish? Isn't everyone Jewish? The reason why people have this 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 thing with Jewish is because yeah. because of our horns, because of the higher parts of ourselves. We have our higher parts. Our more, our more, our more. Um, the higher parts of ourselves, our horns get caught in the thicket. We don't know what to do with our Jewishness. We have the voice of where we come from, the giving of the Torah. We have the voice of our future coming of Mashiach. We don't know what to do with the voice. We don't know what, what, what to do with that, that uh, feeling 
of, um, of being chosen by Hashem for this unique destiny and having this, um, this, this otherworldly consciousness of Hashem's presence that, that, that every Jew is given. As the Torah says, we're believers, children of believers. So what do we do with our Jewishness? We hide it, we couch it, we don't know what to do with it. That's the meaning of the, of the ram getting caught in the thicket. We don't know what to do with this Jewishness. What happens on our Shoshan? Shoshan, we build a shofar. Last Saturday night, I was in, I was in the Rebbe's show in 770. I was doing slichas, and my gartel was caught and tied up. And, and when you're, when you're squ- squished with thousands of people, it's very hard to get your bearing to like untie your, your gartel. And I was thinking the idea of untying, untying, some, untying the knots is very, very apropos to what, what shofar is all about. What does it say? Why do you build the shofar? We build the shofar to confuse the satan. How does it confuse the satan? What's going on with this guy? He doesn't know the show. We all know the show. We know exactly how it starts, how it continues. We can predict it. We know what's going to happen when. And all of a sudden we say, we're going to blow the shofar and the satan's going to get confused. Why is he confused? Why does that suddenly cause him to like have pause and hears the shofar? What doesn't he know that he hears the shofar all of a sudden it, it like, like shakes him up? What does the satan do? Son goes to Hashem and Son says to Hashem, you know this guy, why is he doing this? Why doesn't he have more concentration when he prays? Why isn't he studying more Torah? Why isn't he giving more tzedakah? Why isn't he kinder? Why isn't he, is he nicer? Why isn't he softer? What's going on with this guy? That's what the Satan says to Hashem. Look at this guy. Why isn't he the way he's meant to be? What's wrong with him? What's wrong? What's wrong is, is that our inner voice, our, our, our real identity isn't coming, to, coming out. We're, we're getting caught by all kinds of things in the, in the thicket, and our inner voice isn't coming out. We blow the shofar, what happens? The shofar is the opposite, or it's, it's symbiotic of who we are. How does Hashem create the human being, the Jew, different from all the creatures? All the creatures, God says, all, all the creatures, God says, let there be sheep, and there are sheep, let there be cattle, there are cattle. By the creation of man, what does the Torah say? He blew into his nostrils the spirit of life. Why blow? What's the idea of blowing? The idea of blowing is you give up yourself when you blow. You can't blow for too long. You can talk and talk and talk. Don't worry, I'm almost finished. But, you could, but, but blowing is harder. Why? Because blowing takes, takes from your core. Blowing the chauffeur means we are Jews. We have a part of Hashem in us. A part that comes from the essence of Hashem. And that's why we're beloved by Hashem because we're part of Hashem. We're His children. Blowing the shofar means that we're saying to Hashem that I belong to you. That this is my, that my essence is you. All the things that I'm doing, I'm doing this mistake, that mistake, I go here, I go there, you're accusing me of this, you're accusing me of that. It's true, I get pulled in many different directions. But if you want to know who I am, who am I? The shofar expresses who I really am. Vaisa, 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 vaisa. That's the vaisa, not the gila. The shofar is, is an expression of, of our of our deepest self, how we belong, how we're connected, how we're part of the destiny of Jewish people. That when we blow the shofar, we're saying, "I'm not confused. I'm not in different directions. I'm, I'm clear. I'm pure. I know who I belong to." Blowing the shofar says, "I belong and I'm part of it." So that's why the son is confused. He's going to accuse Hashem and say, "We're this and we're that." We blow the shofar. It's like, "Well, we're not that. We're not that. This, we're, so, we're totally different." We're, we're expre- when we blow the shofar, it expresses how we're not the way we seem. How we really are these people that are deeply connected to Hashem. And that's why Satan gets confused. What am I going to say to him now? I, I, I keep accusing him of doing this. But that's not who he is. Look at who he is right now. It's obviously not who he is. And therefore Hashem listens to us and forgives us. Because yeah. when we build a shofar, we reveal how we and Hashem are one. And that we come together as Shoshana with love and unity with each other. As the Talmud says that the Jewish people are like twigs. When they're by apart, they could get broken easily. Come together. We let go of our differences. And, come like, and the twigs are put together, and you, can't, you can't break them. Huh? No, the son doesn't know what to answer. He's talking to Hashem. He's, he's, the son is talking to Hashem, you don't say a bracha, you don't give it you're not nice, you're not kind, you're not soft. And the, the shofar doesn't know I am. I am, look, look at me, look who I am. So the son's like, oh, I, 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 didn't, I don't recognize these people, they're, they're different people. Therefore, the son's all over the accusations are like, whoa, what did I say? <laughs> With great joy and happiness, acceptance the yoke of Hashem, 
Our desire is to do what Hashem wants us to do. With simcha and joy. And that's the approach to Shoshana. The acceptance of the yoga of Hashem with absolute happiness. L'chaim, l'chaim, l'chaim.